everyone! In today's video I had amazing talk with Dr. Jim Franklin, who is an amazing musician and member of our community. And he's using his 3 Castle 1.5 in a way I have never saw before. So enjoy this interview, because I definitely did. Uh, enjoy his music, because he will play some tunes for us. Hello, Jim. I'm Patrick from Bustle Instrument. Uh, we have a Hi, very, very special guest here, uh, Dr. Jim Franklin. He, you emailed us like few few weeks ago, uh, with basically only with a, with a picture of your setup, and everyone in our company was blown away with that. And uh, mm. in this video, uh, we want to learn more about your setup because it's special. <laughs> So first, yeah. okay. uh, if you can if you can tell us something about you, like what what you are doing in, in music. Okay, um, this is all a bit complex. You know, I, I do a couple of different things, which at first sound like they're they're total contradiction. Um, I I studied composition, classical composition, at university in Sydney in Australia, where I come from. And so on the one hand, I, I work and have worked as a classical composer, a composer of contemporary classical music, with uh, gradually an accent on electronic music, you know, classical electronic music, not so much beats and, and techno and house and hip hop and all the rest of it, you know, but uh, more in the, the classical sort of you know, sound textures line. Um, and parallel to that, I, uh, I decided that I, because I was working with electronics, but I actually liked performing, I got involved in playing um, a rather unusual acoustic instrument, mm -hmm. um, the shakuhachi, the Japanese bamboo yeah. flute. Yeah. So um, I, I have these two strands to my, my musical life of you know, uh, classical electronic composition, um, synthesis, you know, sometimes computer synthesis, sometimes analog, and so on. Um, and this, this um, traditional Japanese bamboo flute. And um, increasingly, you know, also right when I started, I wanted to be composing for these, these two together. So um, the thing that, that uh, I find uh, most interesting at the moment for me is how I combine performing with the, the Japanese flute, performing with the electronics, and preferably doing it at the same time. Uh -huh. So one person performing both both things. Now, in in doing that, you know, I've had to develop for myself um, some non-standard techniques for the flute. Um, so that uh, actually the, the flute's a, a bit unusual is that uh, you don't use all of the fingers for for playing the holes. It only has a limited number of holes. So mm -hmm. you can actually use one finger to touch things. Okay. So, you know, I, I you know, like using instruments that I can touch uh, and then change things easily you know, by either moving a potentiometer or by a touchpad or something like that, that I can then play simultaneously. Um, so instruments that I've tried out, you know, have ranged everything from um, Korg Volkos through to Haken Continuum Mini. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at some point, um, I uh, heard about, well, initially Castle version one, uh -huh. um, and um, thought mm, it's still a bit limited in what it can do for me. But then when Castle one point five came out, and I heard demos of it, I thought maybe this would be interesting. So um, I, I uh, gradually bought one, and then two, and then. Three and I actually have six of them. Oh yeah, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the point where we where we were really interested because yeah. you know it's, it's quite normal that you you see people with one, two, or maybe three castles at the same time, but six mm. that's that's something very unusual. Well, the setup that I've got that we were talking about, uh, it's actually only using three at once, but I've got okay, in, so in other little have, setups. And yeah. this and this interview, like you're yeah, it's all boring again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm just, I, of yeah. course, I'm just kidding. So
So what we have here, um, I'm sorry, it's maybe a bit hard to see, but anyway, we've got you know, number one, mm. castle, number two, castle, mm -hmm. and those two are combined. You know, so they've got uh, a tiny little Korg effects processor up here okay. and two uh, boss pedals, delay pedal and a reverb pedal doing their processing and I'll show you all the patching stuff in a second. Then over the other side we've got number three castle and a soft pop. Yeah I can see uh, there is there is definitely some DIY stuff around that. Yeah yeah there's a, a lot of DIY, DIY stuff around all of this. Um, just to, to complete this up, the, the soft pop is being driven by a, a little division sequence, a division six card sequencer, mm -hmm. which really I'm just using as a tiny keyboard at the moment. Mm -hmm. And this has all got you know, its own, you know, another little Korg um, uh, processor, yeah. you know, multi effects processor on top of it. Um, so for what I'm, I'm going to show you, you know, basically the only effects that I'm using are a bit of chorus and delay and reverberation. The way it, it's set up is that I've got the three castles uh, doing three independent layers, or the two castles and the castle soft pop spliced together mm -hmm. combination. They're not uh, mutually influencing one another except for one castle and the, the soft pop, this, this one here. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're doing independent sound layers. And so the, the, I've, I've got uh, up to you know, three possible textural layers. Okay. Um, now, uh, the simplest one, uh, or the, the, the one that's easiest to understand what's going on, I suppose, is uh, this one here. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to be chuggling around a little bit because I'm, I'm looking at myself on a tiny thumbnail at the same time as, as trying to look at my, my setup. Now, um, you said there's you know, a lot of customization, well, a lot of DIY stuff. Uh -huh. uh, what I found when working with the, the castles was, you know, of course, they're great being able to you know, patch anything to anything. And um, somewhere in the little castle manual, there's the, the hint, try out 
patching anything to anything via resistors, capacitors, and so on. And so I did. And um, I eventually came up with what I found to be my personal soft, uh, personal uh, you know, sweet spots for everything, mm -hmm. for, for what I wanted to do, for the sounds that I wanted to do. But for performance, you know, um, using tiny patch cables is useless. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great idea for the castle because it makes it tiny, but it really is you know, impossible on stage to, to repatch using these cables. So I, I just built... Um, a series of switches with the resistors that I was using with a potentiometer for a, a control voltage uh, to switch various things in and out um, okay. quickly and easily. So for instance, um, let me see what I've got here. Um, yeah, okay, this should, should theoretically produce some kind of sound. Okay, so we've got now basic sound. Now, um, through the, the switches, what I can do, for instance, is switch the LFO onto the, um, the FM. Um, another switch does the LFO reset trick. That set so that the, it's uh, it's patched down here so that the uh, the um, the LFO rate is being you know, modulated by the uh, quasi-random voltage that's coming out of it. Um, and then also I've got this set up so that I've got uh, well from this basic tone. Uh, so this is just uh, actually deliberately short-circuiting the, um, the uh, modulation amount to earth. So, and, and I check the circuit diagram to make sure I'm not abusing anything. There's a little resistor in the, the, the bus, in the, the castle, which stops anything being short-circuited, even if I short-circuit it. So I'm deliberately short-circuiting it, which gave me a better, you know, more slightly more stable sound. But um, if I remove that, then I've got switches that allow me different amounts of modulation and a capacitor to smooth it off a little bit. And so tricks like that. Now the potentiometer here, um, uh, where are we? You're not seeing it, sorry. Here. It's feeding into the um, second oscillator. So just a control voltage going to the second oscillator so that I can change it easily without having to dive into this nest of wires. And also it means that I can find a, a particular tune point. That's, so, that's, that's simply amazing. I love this. Now, then the other nice little trick is you know, um, using the, you know, once you know what's going on with FM, using um, FM with a very low carrier frequency, uh -huh. uh, either zero hertz or a fraction of a hertz, um, you basically end up with uh, a, 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 a um, adding harmonics of the modulator. And so, you know, I've got that so that uh, it's also in this position with this little thing, which says plus three volts for a good reason. Um, Turned off, it's the carrier frequency is shorter, the, the oscillator one on the castle, its frequency control is shorter circuited to earth. So it's it's it's, it's lowest, you know, sort of like 0.5 hertz or something like that. However, if let's, let's give it a high frequency there somewhere, if I turn this on, it's now going to get three volts and go into ring modulation, or ring modulation, similar kind of effect. If I then add, you know, say, something like that, the second castle up here, um, which the switches are laid out in a different way, but it's basically the same kinds of switches. Mm -hmm. 
just you know whatever I happen to have on hand, like pieces of aluminium that I could put on via Velcro strips and so on to to make it all hang together. But yeah, it's basically the same thing. The other one over here um, that's using the the soft pop, but uh, and what I had before this drone type sound. That's you know the the soft pop oscillator, but the uh, the control voltage and this sort of envelope thing that's going to the uh, the filter is actually coming from the soft pop uh, from from the castle. It's been cross patched from the low frequency oscillator of the the castle. So that's spliced together as you know, sort of two instruments into one. But again with you know, um, a couple of switches, where am I, sorry, switches here, switches that I can turn on and off to, to get different things. So like for instance, if I switch this one, I'm getting now something from the castle, its main oscillator, going into the, the filter of the, uh, the soft pop. So the, that's what I mean by multiple layers. There's multiple yeah. layers of stuff. Tell me, tell, yeah. tell me one thing. Uh, like, uh, how you find your way from like f f to combining these two elements, like of uh, very traditional acoustic instruments and uh, well, non non traditional modern electronic stuff. Um, the the most important thing, well, two most important things for me. Um, the the shakuhachi is built, and its traditional music is is built around the idea not of of um, melodies in the the usual sense of you know you've got you know the twelve semitones in an octave and you you pick out your semitones and put them in a rhythm. It's uh, very much oriented towards um, tone color mm -hmm. and also fine changes of pitch and, and dynamics. Mm -hmm. And so the, the structure of the music is not so much melodic, but tone color oriented, tone color and, and timbre and texture oriented. And for me, that was something that um, well, electronic music is very good at. <laughs> so, you know, working with tone colors, textures, uh, fine pitch shifts and so on. I mean, going beyond MIDI, where you've got you know, basically the idea of you know, 12 semitones per octave, of course, you've got all the instruments that can do microtonality and so on. But you know, the basic idea is you've got a certain number of notes in an octave and you trigger them by hitting a key or sending a MIDI message or something. But beyond that, um, you can then do a lot of fine shifting of tone color and pitch and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where the two meet for me. Um, technically, um, combining the two together, it's been a long process for me, really over uh, decades, literally decades of figuring out what I could do. Um, somewhere around 2000, I was looking for an electronic instrument that could um, match up the, this flexibility of dynamics and, and pitch and so on that the shakuhachi can do, and I came up with a theremin. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I also use theremin in, in a lot of my recordings and performing. Not here in this setup. There's no theremin in the castle setup. Okay. Sorry. Um, actually, there's no theremin in this room that I'm in, but uh, they're all upstairs. But um, you know, there, there's this, uh, two theremins in the house that I'm talking from, but you're know, not in this room. Um, but uh, there, um, I, I started working with um, using the theremin signal and then processing it via filtering, ring modulation, delays, you know, all the usual sorts of things that you would do with electronics. And at some point, it occurred to me that you know, I could do the same stuff with the shakuhachi mm -hmm. because the shakuhachi is, you know, it's a, like an acoustic oscillator in a sense. You put a microphone on it and a preamplifier, and you have a signal. Mm -hmm. You can put that same signal through ring modulator, filter, um, voltage controlled amplifier, whatever you want to do, delay and you know, process it in the same way that you would use you know, any kind of electronic oscillator. Mm -hmm. And so I started developing you know, uh, a setup of instruments that would allow me to do that. And so you know, using shakuhachi combined with the electronics in the same sound world, but using, you know, of course, you hear the acoustic sound of the shakuhachi, so it has to be composed in such a way that you uh, allow for that. 
but then combining these these sound worlds you know from the shakuhachi from its shifts of pitch and tone color converting those into shifts of pitch and tone color with the electronics mm -hmm. and then adding extra textural layers using other electronics mm -hmm. and so um for me then the, uh, the the ongoing process has been finding particularly small electronics like that i can cart around to festivals easily um and, and set up quickly and so on that still gives me uh, a broad range of, of processing tone color and so on not so much of the shakuhachi signal but of its own synthesis um and so I ended up, you know, as I said, using things like you know, Korg Volkers, which are, of course, tiny. And the tiniest usable thing that I've come across has been the, the castle. Um, so you know, using the, the castle and, and then um, combining multiple layers of it. Perfect. How I ended up, how I got to using three castles at, at once. And, and there's a soft pot one in there as well, too. So uh, another little bastel instrument, yeah, yeah. Um, small bastel instrument, um, was that uh, I decided you know, the easiest way to do things was going to be to have for each individual combination of instruments just one setup, not to have to completely dismantle things and, and reassemble them, but you know, to have one setup on one board and, okay, for this piece I need that board and for the, another piece I need that board with that combination of instruments. So you're...